So we're gonna start by installing the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. In your store page, go to the search and search for Fortnite. And you can find Unreal Editor for Fortnite. After you're done with the installation, you can go to the library. If you don't see your library here, go to the Unreal Engine, go to Settings, and make sure that Hide Game Library is disabled. Now we can go to the library and we can launch Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So when you open your Unreal Editor, the first window you're gonna see is your project browser. Here you can see your ongoing projects and create new ones. Let's make a template. Go to Island Templates and search for Excel Grid Island. Give it a name and press Create. If this is your first time using Unreal Engine, I'm just gonna briefly go over some UI stuff. So this is your viewport with the right mouse you can move the camera. With VASD, the same like in video games, you can control your camera. So in the viewport there is a burger menu. First important thing we want to enable is show FPS. So we can see our FPS. Then the next is screen percentage. It's basically kind of like basic resolution change. If your project is set right now at 180p, then 100% gonna be 180p. Next is the lighting mode. At the most part, you're just gonna leave it unlit. If you have like a weaker computer and you've struggled to make your scene, you can turn to the unlit and basically what it's gonna do is turn off the lights and dramatically gonna increase your FPS. So the next we have time of day. You can move a slider and select what kind of time of day you want. And next is scalability. So basically you can see this as your graphic settings in video game. It's not gonna make any impact on your project at all. So in the viewport we can select objects. We can move it up. We can select rotation tool, which is also E. We can move it and then we can also select scale tool and we can scale meshes. When your mesh is selected, there is a detail panel. Detail panel is going to show basic information about your mesh. Location, rotation, scale. It's going to show what kind of mesh you have selected, what kind of material is applied. And to the more complex object, you're going to have other options too. For example, if you select water, we can see there's extra parameters that were not available in the regular meshes. Now let's go to the edit. Under edit, we have editor preferences. For the most part, I wouldn't touch anything here. Only thing you can change is your game resolution. And again, this is tied together, so 100% gonna be 180p for me. So under the windows, we have a few options. Cinematic, that's something we're gonna touch a bit later. Content browser is basically your asset library. There's multiple ways how you can access it. The one option is right here at the bottom, we have content drawer. Basically here is gonna be all your assets, or we can also make a tabs, something that I usually prefer. For easier workflow, you can also add multiple ones. Let's add another one. So you can put them side by side and toggle between them. Or, or if you have a wide enough monitor, you can actually put them side by side and work in two folders at the same time. So the next is we have viewport. So we can make multiple viewports in case if you're working with multiple monitors. So next we have output log. You can again turn it on or it's also available here. Here you can basically see if you have any errors in your project. The next is fab. Fab is basically an asset marketplace. Right now it mostly consists of Megascan assets, but in the future Unreal Engine is going to expand the library and you're going to be able to use other people made assets. So next, under the tools, the most important thing is going to audit and statistics. Here you can see the data about your meshes. Your project is kept by the project size. And for example, if you put some kind of really not very well optimized mesh, it can immediately take a lot of your project size. Here you can all the time take a look if there is some kind of meshes that takes way too much memory and you can just replace them with something else. And lastly, we have something called Outliner. This is basically kind of a collection that shows all the meshes that are available in your scene. So you can basically see here if you select and we can basically select any mesh. You can select and move and you can also delete from here. Let's for example delete this grid. Select the first one, scroll down, let's find the last grid plane. While holding shift, select the last one. Now we can see all the meshes are selected and just press delete. Let's delete this cube too and let's delete this cube. Now let's start to work on our landscape. Create a landscape, it's very easy here. We're gonna go here and we're gonna change from selection mode to the landscape. Now we can see this is basically our landscape. Here you can change the size and re resolution for your landscape. So here you can basically change your landscape height. I'm gonna change it to let's say 700. This looks good so far. So we can see it consists of quads and that's basically going to influence how detailed landscape you can make. You can change, for example, from 63 to 31, but instead of selecting one by one section, we can select two by two and it's going to be the same quad amount, just more detailed. And that's something I want. Make sure your landscape material is selected. Let's just double check it. And now we can press create. Great. You have created our landscape. 
And if we go zoom in, we can see that there's already a grass for our landscape. So the next thing we can we can do is something we can sculpt our landscape. We have multiple sculpting tools, so we can sculpt things, we can flatten things, make ramps. Let's choose just a sculpt tool. Let's change our strength to like 0 0.5. Brush size could work. And we can start to sculpt mountains for our landscape. And let's make another one. Let's say we want this not to look so, so flat and we want it to go in the water. So while holding shift, you can actually start to sculpt down. And we can like sculpt this in the water. Awesome. So next thing is a lot of landscape is looking great. We are missing some extra details. So if you go to the paint, we can actually paint our terrain. So by default, it's set to the grass. But for example, we can select this one. And I think it's, it looks like a sand. Yes. And so also we can select like this is, looks like some kind of volcano. Once again, you can change your brush size and let's just make the tops of our mountain a bit volcanish. Let's say we want this project to be a race game. So next thing we're going to do is start to build a road. So if we go back to the manage, what we can do is in the manage tab before actually we go into roads, I can show you one more thing. You can also add, let's say you want to expand your island with extra things. We can add extra things. Let's say we can add this. So to add roads, we're going to go to the splines. Now let's select the layer. You can, you can make different kind of layers for your map and you can hide them. You can reveal them. Let's create a new layer. Press create. Let's make a right click and rename it to the road. Now make a right click on the road and choose reserve for splines and click yes. While this layer is selected, make sure that layer is selected. While holding control, you can make a left click and we can start to build our racetrack. And you can see what's happening now. The landscape is adjusting by where we are putting our road. So let's say we want now the road come here. You can see it immediately creates a gap. We are like, oh, we actually want the road to be more up. So you can select any any part of the spine. And if you move up, it automatically gonna adjust the landscape. And we can select the last one again and keep building. So our racetrack is ready. So let's make a few adjustments. Let's move this one a bit up maybe. And now we can see the grass is sticking out. What we can do is one of the fixes is we can go back to the paint and we can start painting over. So once you're done painting the surface under your road, you can see that actually we don't have actual road here. And to add the road, let's go back to the manage. Let's select the road layer. Then under the select all, click segments. Now we can go back to the detail panel. Again, the magical detail panel. And scroll down and find landscape spline meshes, spline meshes. Let's click add element. Open the index and here under the mesh, click and search for road straight click on it and bam now our race game has a road so next thing that our game is missing is some cool props right switch from landscape mode to select mode go to fortnite and here and search for fab and here if you move this up we have different kind of props here it's gonna be like farm racing game and we can put it here and we can rotate when you're selecting your assets, you're going to notice that actually, if you click on it, it's actually selecting individual pieces because in Fortnite, obviously, you can destruct them. So it actually consists of multiple individual pieces. But you can make corrections too. If you want, don't want this wall to be here, you can delete. But if you want to move the whole mesh, you just go here and let's search for barn. If you click this one, we can move the whole thing. But if you want to make, let's say, some individual changes, let's say this tires, I want them to be here. You can do that. Let's add something else. Let's add this big shed here. So now there's one more thing I would like to show you is, so let's say we want to add some extra waters here. One of the things you could do is, for example, use the sculpting tool and drag the mesh in and basically make, let's say lake there, or we can also search for lake. We're gonna need to find this compiled blueprint class. So if you drag and drop it in our scene, you can see it automatically made a lake. And it's the same like with the roads to spline tool. We can adjust it. And if you hold alt and drag one of the points, we can create an extra one. And we can make a small lake here. 
And for example, if we want an island in the middle, again, we can search for island and here we can find an island and let's drop it in and bam, it automatically created small island there. We are missing two things. We want to add some transportation and we want to add some cinematics. One of the coolest features is you can edit your map in editor and we can also edit the map in creative like we did before. Let's launch a session. Press save selected. So here we are in the creative and you can basically do creative stuff here. Let's open up, let's go to inventory and here in the menu let's go to devices and let's select sports bike spawner and let's press a Q and paste place now and let's put some cool bikes. Take one. And the cool thing is everything you do in creative syncs also with your project in Unreal. You can see that all the changes right away also appears in Unreal Engine. So lastly, I think we get what we're going to do is to create a small animation sequence. It's actually pretty e easy to do. We can again come here. Let's create like a small welcome cinematic. So right now, first go to devices and search for scene cinematic sequence. Let's add it here. So next we're going to add our character going to be the race soldier. Then in any folder, make a right click, go to cinematics and choose level sequence. Let's give it a name. Welcome. Open it up. First thing we can do, we're going to grab our character and drag it into the scene. Then go to animations and add any kind of animation. So I want my character to have a happy dance. Start a happy dance when he sees me. You have two choices. You can just leave it like that and you're going to be basically from your player perspective. Or for example, if you want to make like a, like a cut scene, we can add a camera. If we select a the camera, there's a camera settings. Let's change the film back to DSLR. Let's go to the focus settings. Let's move our aperture to the lowest you can move. Let's go to this. Now our dancing character is here. Now let's exit the camera by pressing this. We exit the camera and the camera stays here. Now to trigger this, we need to find, we need to find a trigger thing and we can just put it here. Let's rotate. So now select your cinematic under the sequence. We can click welcome. And if you scroll down, there is a play function. Use this selection tool. And let's select the trigger and choose from none to on trigger. So basically when this is going to get triggered, the sequence will play. And now if we go to our project and we are in our game. And if you stand on the pad, our character just starts to dance and bam, that's it. And we could do it again. And he's still happy to see it. So this was quick introduction to Unreal Engine for Fortnite. If you have any questions, join my Discord channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.